What's up, Flamers? I am evasive and I am absolutely desperate for views right now, so I have decided to give homophobia a try. Let's be real. Ever since gay marriage was legalized in this country, gay men have had it too good for far too long. Anyone in America can become a gay man now. Straight men can become gay men. Straight women can become gay men. Your dad can become a gay man now if he wants to. And there's nothing you can do about it. Someone has to take these gay men down a peg and that someone is going to be me. So for this video, I lured four gay men to my house with a free screening of Call Me By Your Name and then recorded their reactions while I made them watch I Now Pronounce You Chuck and Larry instead. Now in my past videos, I got my guest pizza, but I wasn't really sure if gay men eat pizza and I didn't have any time to research what they do eat. So instead I just ran to the grocery store and took an educated guess. Gay men in the comments, please let me know how I did. Personally, I think I did a great job. Before we get to the main event though, let me quickly explain how this classic piece of queer cinema came to be. I Now Pronounce You Chuck and Larry is a 2007 comedy starring everyone's favorite ambiguously gay duo, Adam Sandler and Kevin James. Now, according to this little blurb I found in a gay magazine from 1999, this movie was originally titled I Now Pronounce You Joe and Benny, and it was going to be directed by the same guy who made Ace Ventura. Also, it was supposed to star Nick Cage and Will Smith. <laughs> These plans fell through though, which led to Oscar winning screenwriters, Jim Taylor and Alexander Payne taking over the project and rewriting the script. Yes, that Alexander Payne. The same guy that made these is also a credited screenwriter on this. Oh my God. Oh, sweet Lord, broccoli. Oh my God. <laughs> As you might expect, this was not their fault. Payne and Taylor's script was very different from what ended up being filmed. Their version, which was called Flamers, was described as being a sensitive but sharply funny script about Philadelphia firefighters that included more nuanced characters and would have ended with a passionate gay makeout scene on the courthouse steps. Sadly though, in 2005, Adam Sandler saw the script and decided it was now his script and he was going to do whatever he wanted with it. Cutting out the kissing and adding gay panic jokes and Rob Schneider playing caricature of an Asian priest. After Sandler ruined his script, Alexander Payne disowned the movie and unsuccessfully tried to get his name taken off the credits. Full disclosure though, I got this information from an unsourced blurb on TV tropes, but like, I mean, I believe it. Yes, go ahead. Oh. Um. Well. Yeah, they're real and creamy. Now you could say, oh, Ava, consider the time period. It was 2007. Don't ask, don't tell was still in effect. Massachusetts was the only state that had legalized same-sex marriage. Neil Patrick Harris had just come out of the closet. Okay, yeah, sure. But also consider that all of these other movies had already come out by then. Anyway, this movie got a 14% on Rotten Tomatoes, was nominated for eight Razzies, and it made $187 million. And I'm already sick of talking about it, so let's just get into it. Hey guys, before we begin, this video is sponsored by Aura. Let's be honest, these days it's pretty much impossible to keep track of all of your data alone. You've got your name, phone number, email addresses, usernames, passwords, photos, credit card numbers, bank information, all spread across the dozens of online accounts you've made over the years. You could spend hours every month trying to compile and monitor all this data yourself, or you can just get Aura. Aura is the all-in-one app that provides you with identity theft protection, password management, antivirus protection, a VPN, personal info monitoring, credit tracking, Experian credit lock, and $1 million of identity theft insurance per adult, all in one affordable package. In addition to all that, Aura can also identify data brokers exposing your info and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. I got set up with Aura recently. The whole process only took me a few minutes, and personally, I find having everything available in one place like this to be so convenient and neat. Also, it gives me so much peace of mind knowing that all my online data is being securely monitored and there's a 24 seven customer support line available if anything happens. If this all sounds good to you, then take advantage of Aura's two week free trial, which you can get by going to aura.com slash evasive or by clicking the link in the description below. Thank you again to Aura for sponsoring. Now let's get into the video. I'm still in a dream snake. Do you 
on the Pokemon? Oh, wait. I wanted this, the Pokemon. Okay, give it to the baby. This is Shadow the Hedgehog. It says, nice clock. <laughs> para arriba. Arriba. Para abajo. Para abajo. Oh, good job. Para el centro. Para el centro. Para dentro. Para dentro. Para dentro. Okay. Cheers. Cheers, 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 cheers. By the way, before any of you write me hate comments, no, I'm not trying to get Adam Sandler canceled. I don't care. I only made this video so I could get paid. So this intense gay romance film opens with some Angels in America style establishing shots of New York City, which is where these handsome gay men are from, by the way, in case you're wondering. Wait, I thought we're seeing. Call me by your name. Call me by your name. <laughs> So this is a big laugh when you texted me. That's what I texted I'm you. I'm so happy. Because I thought why would you believe in Why would you watch that? What chat? content? Why? 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 Yeah. There are subtitles for that. No, but now, it's obvious to anyone with eyes that Adam Sandler is one of the sexiest men ever invented. But in case you didn't know that, here is two attractive twins loudly fighting over him in broad daylight. Tell me, I don't have satisfying man. You shut your shut mouth, out, you fat ass. I am like on the trash. trash. I'm bored. Whoa, yeah, whoa, 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 come on. I don't fight you two. Your sisters, give each other a kiss and make up. Dares to? Unless that's too freaky for Darla over here. Remember when this was a thing? What? Women making out. Mm. Past tense. <laughs> Stop that. They don't do it anymore. Right? Before any mild incest occurs, though, a fire breaks out uptown, and now we get to meet the rest of the fire squad. There's walking Ghostbusters reference, Dan Aykroyd as the captain, Ving Rhames, aka the guy who says, All these, we have the meat. As the new transfer firefighter, and the rest of the squad. Their names aren't important. Also, none of these firemen are hot, which I that's feel like is such true. a missed opportunity. That's not true. You don't find Adam Sandler hot? I don't find Adam what? Sandler hot. I like any white guy. Adam Sandler's pretty hot. Not gonna Shut lie. up, Bill Bergeron. Uh, you said you were going to sign Mr. Patrick. See? I would be. Those are airbrushed ass. That's not so. That's the photo who shot. Who cares? Like, you haven't hooked up with an airbrushed Who's person before. Sure? <laughs> right. Determined to blow through his $85 million budget as quickly as possible, Adam Sandler has his heroes run into a burning building somewhere in Brooklyn. Okay, this has to be Crown Heights. We get it, you live in New York. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there, I've been there. That's my landlord. <laughs> so Chuck and Larry hear a child's voice in the flames and dash in to rescue him, only to discover that he's not a child, but instead just a really long, expensive, fat shaming joke. Was this ever funny? Chuck, are you alright? I think it would have been funnier if he was like on the other side and farted on his face. I've been horny. He did, he did. Sure. So after that red hot scene, we get to see Kevin James show off his fine Italian cooking skills. I don't know, that looks good. Boy, Why is he slapping it in there though? Comedic effect. Oh, you're right. Comedic effect. And now we get to meet Larry's daughter, Tori, and his gay-coded son, Eric. And when I say gay-coded, I'm talking gay, gay-coded. I'm auditioning for the school musical, Pippin. You, you like that, huh? The uh, musical thing. Yeah, I love it. I think it's my calling. This is before Glee, too. It's like before... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we had this. Before that was acceptable. We just had this. That's what you said about hopscotch. You're just jealous because I can do the splits. Do the splits, Mama. Oh! By the way, I just want to point out that in Alexander Payne's version of the script, Eric was described as an aspiring figure skater whose sexuality seems to be in flux. He's sensitive to abuse taken at school and angrily rebels against Chuck and Larry's seeming union. And then Adam Sandler took that character and turned him into this. Do it now! And the Russian split! Oh! Anyway, so Larry's wife, Paula, passed away a year ago for reasons unknown, and now he has to go visit government worker Rachel Dratch to have his insurance beneficiaries changed. Beneficiaries can only be changed for three events, births, deaths, and marriages. According to our records, we did contact you when your wife passed away. You had a year... You should have responded. Now cut to the next day at work where Chuck and Larry are exploring a burned out building and talking about Larry's son. Maybe it'll make skipping an Olympic event. There's still hope. 
Come on, man. I don't have enough problems. Baton swallowing. I bet he'd be great. Ew. Wow. wow. He's a child. Little oh. child. Wait, what'd he say? Making fun of his gay son. What'd he say? He's making fun of his gay son. There are subtitles. I didn't hear you because you, you guys kept speaking. Intact. How do you not know how to read a movie? All right, I'll give you a thousand bucks. You eat this thing's head. For a thousand bucks, I'll start at the ass and work my way to the head. This is so <laughs> horny. Oh my so god. Bad. Here you go, buddy. Fuck around and find out. Yeah, the rats do own this city. In a brave, selfless act of true love, though, Larry is there to break Chuck's fall and shield him from falling debris. Do you think gay guys would also save each other's lives like that? No. 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 <laughs> they are put out when they have to save someone from a K-hole. Okay. So Chuck and Larry wake up in the hospital, and Chuck immediately starts objectifying the doctor. You're hot. Honey, how's my buddy doing? Please address me as doctor. Doctor, honey. Yeah, okay, you got it. And also, Chuck tells Larry that he owes him his life and he'll do anything for him. And it's very obvious where this is going. But before the movie can start getting homosexual, a van full of Asian Hooters girls shows up. Oh, poor Chuck. Hey, hey, my girl. How are you? Oh, where are the gay people? Hey, who wants to massage my ass muscles? Me. Wait, what was that joke? <laughs> I have no idea what that joke was. <laughs> you just move on. What was that? <laughs> it's called representation. Yeah. Do you feel seen? Anyway, Larry cashes in his I saved your life favor by proposing that he and Chuck enter a domestic partnership. You mean like fat? Oh. oh, damn. So Larry tries to convince Chuck to pretend to be gay with him, but he's interrupted by a cameo from America's favorite flat earther neo Nazi, Tila Tequila. Tila Tequila! <laughs> it's Asian girl! Ah! Also, remember the doctor that Chuck was sexist to earlier? Well, guess what? I am so lonely in here. Hurry up, Chuck. My single days were dis disgusting. And uh, <laughs> and I'm glad they're done with. And uh, I look back at them and apologize to everybody who was involved. So now that we've established that Adam Sandler is definitely not gay. I'm not an animal. I'm a whore. Chuck agrees to go along with Larry's plan and the two file for a domestic partnership the next day. And since they're filed under the same address, Chuck has a bunch of porn and an industrial sized box of Magnum condoms delivered to Larry's house because he's straight, heterosexual, S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T, straight man. Don't call him gay. He is straight. He's not a bottom. He is not- You gotta be kidding me. They said these things blown up now? Is that doll for me? Does anyone actually use like something like that? Like a, a flashlight? Did you use a flashlight? Yeah. I've never used a flashlight. Is it like fun? Um, it's not fun. <laughs> Bro, this is this is where we have an ad break. Crafted. <laughs> 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 Found out what started the fire. An old-fashioned doobie. Hey, brother, that's my weed. Can I get that back? Can't give you it back, but you know what? I got something better for you. Okay, like, oh, he's a little. Oh, 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 oh yeah. And after that hilarious weed joke, Chuck and Larry are visited by Glenn Aldrich from the uh, penis department, the pension. Department, our pension uh, department. Oh, hey. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Glenn is here to check on Chuck and Larry to see if they are actually gay. We just been having sex with each other all the time. And loads of sex. Gay crazy sex. Man on man. I ream him nightly and I'm always sucking him off. They are like, come, it's dinner. Stop sucking off your gay husband. Hey, balls and wieners all the way right here. <laughs> I just want to know who the bottom is. Who do you think? Kevin Jones. Kevin James. I don't know. Yeah. I think, yeah, the is the bottom. He's I, think, the family. I think they're both He's sides. Then Glenn leaves after telling the pair that they'll be receiving unannounced visits from a special investigator for the next few months because they're suspected of not being gay. So the next day, Chuck and Larry visit a hot, straight ally lawyer named Alex, played by a 24-year-old Jessica Biel. You snort it, right? <laughs> Alex suggests that Chuck and Larry prove their partnership by going to Canada to get married. So cut from that to... I know you love me. I want to word you up into my life. Wait, Ellington, where is this in New York? It's not that's Niagara <laughs> Falls, bitch. My family took me there on a road trip once. So I have also been there. 
I had, that was my first boner and I had to pee at the same time and it was so painful. Nice. And that was at the Ripley East Believe It or Not Museum. Oh my god, I went to a haunted house there. And on their way to get married, Chuck and Larry encounter homophobia for the first time. Oh yeah, <laughs> what a lucky girl. <laughs> Weirs. What was that? I said, uh, uh, uh tears. <laughs> <laughs> I said <laughs> tears. <laughs> All right, what did it <laughs> Did he say fat? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, what the? That's such a good word. And before you praise Adam Sandler for being weirdly progressive here, uh, well, here's America's favorite anti woke comedian, Rob Schneider. Suki, come look at it! Mishima! Suki! Is he being Asian here? To oh. What is going no. on? What is this obsession with the Asians? Oh, are you really connecting? We cannot supply one for one hundred dollars. Wait, what? Wait, what? Hair, oh, they put content with the Asian stuff. I'm sorry. Did they I apologize? Well, you didn't make this movie. I won't. I feel bad because I'm next to you. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be laughing all the way home. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be dying. Will you be needing a, a loom for romantic time together? See, that's an ally. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything ally should about think they, this uh, performance right now. Are though. you kidding me? That's an ally. He cares about like... Yeah. Now Chuck and Larry have to kiss, but remember, Adam Sandler is straight, so instead of kissing Kevin James, he... Oh, oh. that's really... I mean, that's more gay. That's really homophobic. That's really well, that's, 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 a, that's more gay. That's foreplay. Then Chuck and Larry return home a happily married couple. Chuck says hi to Larry's housekeeper. Hey, big ragu. I smell your feet from here. I like it. And then on their first night together in domestic bliss, Larry's daughter um, gets stuck in a toilet. Somebody left the seat up. Me with a top of this <laughs> <metal. laughs> <laughs> He left this in the kitchen. Hey, don't you look at that. I Actually, you know what? Give me that. Maybe he should look at it. Oh my god. No, he should look at it because that way he'll know for sure. See how this makes you feel. Open it up. Exactly. <laughs> that was good. That's, yeah. okay, that's good. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with that's that. Funny. And after all that, Chuck and Larry climb into bed together. And naturally, being a straight guy, the first thing Chuck does is ask if he can jack off next to his best friend. You got Cinemax in here? No, I do not. What the hell am I supposed to do with this thing? Keep it away from me. And then in the middle of the night, they... And this is not a joke. Chuck and Larry have a threesome with their housekeeper. <laughs> actually, I'm just kidding. That was a joke. What actually happened was Chuck had sex with the housekeeper and Larry somehow slept through it. <laughs> so after that definitely scene, Larry heads outside to find a beloved child actor searching through his trash can. It's, it's Maybe this is Brooklyn. Steve, Steve, Steve Buscemi. It's not Paul Rudd. Oh, no. <laughs> no. That's not Paul Rudd. This guy is named Clint Fitzer, and he's the special investigator sent to determine if Chuck and Larry are gay or not. Now fearing their cover will be blown, the two go to the grocery store to buy some homosexual groceries. Shampoo for perm tear. That's pretty gay. Put it in there. Maxi pads. Now we have vaginas. Put it back. Get some Streisand shit or something. Just walk around. Streisand? Hey, bro. Oh! oh. Okay, so, uh, Very Hello 2, The Village People. Wham! Okay. Wow. okay. They're not yes. wrong. And while buying supplies for their gay sex dungeon for men who have gay sex, Chuck runs into Alex, who invites him to an AIDS Coalition fundraiser. Hell yeah! Sorry, did you say something? No, they got a, a KY jelly, two for a dollar. Hell yeah! Have y'all ever used Not KY? Anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like it. I have a very I've special I've never used kind. it. I like KY. It's, it's fine. Mm. It's fine. No. <laughs> or your loose all anything is. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Alex is going through it enough. No, what is this? Okay, let's see. We got lube jokes, anal jokes, threesome jokes, musical theater jokes. What else? What else? Oh, of course. Gay mailman. Listen, just so you know, if you have a home alone in the afternoons, I make drop-offs. All right. Anything else you, you feel me you need to say there? I handle with care. Okay, Ron. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'd be happy to come in through the back door. This movie is pushing such a terrible narrative about public workers. They all are gay. It's all gay. Horny and, and mean. And in your house, and know where you live. Dressed as a very subtle Twilight reference, Chuck and Larry arrive at the AIDS Coalition costume party. And when they arrive, they're greeted by... <laughs> 
I'm dirty. I'm dirty. That's how I actually entered this apartment tonight. <laughs> also, if you see my Jack and Jill video, this next cameo should come as no surprise to you. I want to suck your blood. <laughs> suck my what? Oh, oh god, this game. I almost said Kate Spade. Kate, Kate Spade. <laughs> Hello. This is how you know funny. it's not a gay party because it's empty no in the bathroom and, and no one in the one. urinals. Yeah. Let's do this. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> now it's all getting excited over yeah. the front hatch. <laughs> so Chuck wades through a sea of homosexuality looking for his lawyer and eventually finds her on stage in a minimal effort furry costume. <laughs> I did not see a single drag queen Wait, at an AIDS coalition. There should be at least 20. There was the Kate Spade. Yeah, Kate Spade was a was the drag queen. Drag queen. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh that okay. Catch. Oh, do we get the first king? There's still an hour left of this movie, so I'm gonna speed things up. Okay, so Alex and her gay brother think Chuck is the bottom, and Chuck doesn't try to correct them because Alex likes that Chuck is a bottom. And then there's a dance scene, but I don't want YouTube to give me a copyright strike, so I'm just gonna skip past this. Then as the party ends, Chuck and Larry and all the queer looking extras head outside to be greeted by a swarm of angry, anti-gay protesters. The public sidewalk, we have every right to be here. Yeah! We have every Right to be queer. Yeah. I would never react that way <laughs> to a brother. I'm just like, yeah. Yeah. see you later. I'm sorry. What did you call me? It. <laughs> I wanted yeah. to do that yeah. to my friend. Ah, uh, this is how Stonewall happened. Yeah. So after Chuck single-handedly paved the way for queer liberation, he and Larry are sat down by their captain so he can make a joke about Chuck's very obvious sex addiction. You. If my pencil sharpener had a skirt, I'd have to hide it. And now it's time for a shopping montage. But I didn't want to get demonetized, so I'll just skip past this and cut to the next day where we get to see Larry speaking at career day at his kid's school. Mr. Valentine, you said you're a fireman. Yes, that is correct. Do you have two jobs? Because my dad said that you're also a butt pirate. You know this movie's dated because they would never let gay people talk to children no. at all. Nope. Groomer. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> then on the way out of school, another parent calls Larry's son gay, and Larry immediately starts beating him up in front of the kids. <laughs> That same night, Chuck goes over to Alex's house so we can have a scene where 40-year-old Adam Sandler gets to grope 24-year-old Jessica Biel's boobs. Well, these are real, by the way. I've got nothing to hide. Feel them. Oh. Um. Wow. Well. Uh, that's the day she got the job, by the way. I just ran out of started squeezing and she was cool with all the cops right away. Yeah, so. yeah. And she was very nice about that. The next day, Chuck arrives at the basketball court only to find that the other firemen are homophobic, so they all flee the scene as soon as he arrives. All except the new guy, that is. Oh, God. Well, you want to mess with me too? Now this is going to be, I can yeah. feel, I can no, feel, he no, no, he's, no, I think he's, no, he's, so that's no, he's no, eyes. you think so, no, no, no because no, you're it's... supposed to be scared of black people, but no, he's going to shed some light of wisdom. Oh, it's like the green mile. <laughs> it's like the green mile. I'm gay. I can't believe I finally said it. Oh God, it feels so good. This, this, movie's, kind of, this movie's kind of deep. No. No. No, because right after this scene, Chuck and Larry go to the showers. <laughs> wow. Oh. No. Yeah, I've been in this situation before. You have? Yeah. I'm so jealous. Oh, oh my god. Ah! No, they slow motion this gag. Oh. Ah! But before any hate crimes can occur, the new guy arrives to show his ass to the camera. Bad ass. <laughs> Bossy then after that, he turns on the exhibitionist shower and starts harmonizing with his boys. Let me hear you say it. I was probably very hard as a child watching this. 
some of the things. I think it was sexy. I couldn't say groomer earlier, but he could say hard as a child. Because I'm talking about me and myself <laughs> and my own experience. And that night, Chuck goes over to Alex's house for a little girl's night in with his lawyer. You know, I love that you're a chubby chaser, by the way. A chubby wah wah. <laughs> <laughs> And then they start making out to a Radiohead song. <gasps> this homewrecker! But before the movie can admit that bisexual people exist, Alice comes to her senses and kicks Chuck out of the house. You have to go? I'm sorry. He hits me though. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, Domestic I know, why is that the last joke of the scene? The next morning, Steve Buscemi returns, but at this point, the gay guys weren't paying any attention because I just gave them popsicles. Cheers. Oh, sorry, I put my mouth already. Like, Hilbert just, Hilbert just literally eats ass. We don't need ass, though. We don't need ass. No, you can't get COVID from eating ass, remember? And then later that day, Chuck and Larry have a domestic dispute. Ever since you forced me to marry you, you, you you're so goddamn controlling, you don't act like my freaking husband. Act like my boss! This is horny too, I'm sorry. Idiot! The only reason you're feeling that way is because you're afraid of feeling trapped. That's what happens when you get married! Oh wait, these have jokes! What falls down but never gets hurt? Rain. <laughs> <laughs> these are riddles, these aren't jokes. And after this very sad daddy argument scene, Chuck and Larry return to the fire station only to find that the rest of the squad has signed a petition asking them to be transferred. Not one to take things lying down though, Larry heads downstairs to confront the other firefighters and remind them of all the times Chuck and Larry saved them. You remember that time Chuck and I ran back in that textile plant and dragged your limp body out, even though Chuck's leg was broken like in three different places? I mean, that was pretty freaking gay, Chuck, huh? What I love most about this movie is that it proves how straight white men really push the gay right agenda forward. <laughs> okay. And we love that. Uh, we good. love that too. Alberto Landon won, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another joke. After his night shift, Larry returns home and cries on his deceased wife's clothes. And now it's time for the emotional climax of the movie. I'm sorry. Me too. I can't handle this. Adam, please make the kid do the silly tap dance again. Hit it! There's my star! Turn it around and flip, 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 flip it. Then the Hooters girls from before rat Chuck out to the media, and he and Larry are going to be put on trial under suspicion of being straight. So after a quick pit stop at the gay pride parade, the pair arrive at the courthouse ready to end homophobia once and for all. I'm on fire, help me! Ah! Cameron Spade. Okay. Late night king. <laughs> Wait, Cameron Spade? They took these roles from Jack gay Spade. actors. David Spade. David Spade. <laughs> Kevin Spade? It's Kevin Jack James. And having had a change of heart, all of their fire department buddies come to the courthouse to be gay allies. The new guy comes out of the closet, and also one of them fishes for compliments from Chuck and does a gay little dance. You hear that? I'm a touch! Woo! And from here on out, the rest of the movie is a gripping courtroom legal drama, starring Steve Buscemi as the prosecutor. Mr. Valentine, please tell us why you married Mr. Levine. Love. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Gay love! Please sit down, sir. <laughs> Me. That's right, Mr. <laughs> you suck! One more, and you're out, sir. Sorry, sir, you're cool. He sucks, I'm gay. I'm out. <laughs> okay, that is literally how I talk. That's the hum and all my sets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he he sucks. I'm gay, I'm out. <laughs> he, he sucks, I'm out. Then Steve Buscemi cross-examines the kids, who happily play along and cover for their dads. Also, the daughter starts listing off sea animals that have gay sex. What are those dolphins? Orcas, gray whales, harbor seals, and West Indian manatees. <laughs> We're getting compared to fucking sea Those animals. are all body types. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I'd be in them. I'd be in them. I'm an orca. <laughs> but right when the case seems to have been won in their favor, our heroes are thrown the ultimate curveball. Would you say that there's a fair amount of passion in your relationship? Absolutely. More passion than you can imagine. Yes. Right? How wonderful. Now, if you'd be so kind, I'd like you to kiss each other. I like to know what was that. Objective! Yeah, come on, fellas, show them a real man kiss. Come on! Kiss, 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 kiss. Y'all are not even... 
As I mentioned before, the earlier version of the script was supposed to feature Chuck and Larry making out passionately on the courthouse steps. But of course, proud heterosexual Adam Sandler didn't want to do that. So instead of a steamy makeout scene, the fire captain interrupts them before their lips can touch. We're in gay love, Captain. Can't you deal with that? Oh, shut up. If these gentlemen are gay, then I'm a one-legged parrot. I don't like this. <laughs> not, was, okay, I don't like this. It's a real slur. Sound. I was like happy with the, the plot until this. But even though he ratted them out, the captain monologues about how Chuck and Larry are still an inspiration to the gay community. And then he goes ahead and lists off all the sexualities he's heard of. Heterosexual, homosexual, asexual, bisexual, trisexual, quadrisexual, pansexual, transsexual, omnisexual. And then to prove he's a true ally, Adam Sandler addresses his 2007 movie theater audience with an important message. For the record, the word fat, that's a, that's a bad word. Don't, don't use it. I used to say it more than anybody, but I was ignorant. It's hurtful. What is this? Gays of our lives? <laughs> I like that. You can't laugh at that. It's a good one. That was the it's 17th good. time that joke has been put into paper. And for the unforgivable crime of being straight, Chuck and Larry are found guilty as charged and sentenced to jail, which prompts the whole fire department to stand up and have one of those, if you arrest them, then you have to arrest me too, type of moment. Oh, yeah. Throw one of us in jail. You gotta throw the whole lot of us in jail. So, what's it gonna be? This movie is losing me. I know. This, Aggressively. Is this oh, it got you now? at some point? It was tough. <laughs> when the gay kid did the splits, I was like, work. But then the gay community comes out to protest on Chuck and Larry's behalf. And as we all know, local governments always listen to protesters immediately. So the city drops the charges on the condition that and this is not a joke, on the condition that the fire department make a gay calendar to raise money for AIDS research. Oh. <laughs> Do you see that muscle dude with the older guy? Fire AIDS. Say it. Orders. What are you gonna say, Hilberto? It's pretty accurate. Flash forward two months later, Larry has started dating women again. Chuck wins over Alex, even though he lied to her hundreds of times about being gay. And the new guy marries Alex's brother with racist Rob Schneider officiating, of course. He's back. Oh. <laughs> two guys right here talking about doing something pretty serious. <laughs> this is the final dialogue. <laughs> That's how they want to end This is the ending monologue. <laughs> they just talked about acceptance and unity, and then they're this like, you the, know what? You know, also Lance Bass is there. Oh, no, Lance Bass! Lance Bass! Yes! What? Jump scare. What? Excuse me. Are you me? doing this movie? Lance oh, Bass is wow. oh, 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 So there you have it. I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Did it have a lot of fat shaming? Yes. Was it racist? Yes. Was it homophobic? Oh, yes. Homophobic? This is incredibly it just would be homophobic. homophobic. Yeah. Was it homophobic? I found many of the jokes to be in poor taste. But I also think like the overall messaging was like, it's okay to be gay, right? Like, that is incredibly that homophobic. <laughs> I think Hilberto's just homophobic. <laughs> well, no, I'm a, I'm not trying to make take it there, but I do think like this idea that like it's okay to be gay is so condescending. So for that reason, I found the movie very condescending. To the I group. guess it, it's okay to be gay if it's funny, but maybe not as serious. But they already gave us Brokeback Mountain, so we needed something like no, all the all the gay characters were the jokes, time. were like punchlines. They weren't characters. They were yeah. just. They were just written and as, that's, yeah, and that's gay that's representation. True. Some that's gay true. people yeah. are annoying. No, that's true. <laughs> it was a little homophobic. It's like the lowest form of comedy is straight men talking about being gay. It's just like the yeah, lowest the punch form line of is comedy. Gay. Yeah. And that's how a lot of like, well, even now, hacked, we, we, right? it's very, yeah. very hacked. It's even hacked now. for even this movie. So I think one out of 10, it was like a six. Like the movie? Oh, oh no, homophobic. That wasn't the question. That was, <laughs> I'm giving a reference like one out of is six. It so you give it a, <laughs> a, it's a, it's a D on the homophobic scale. It's a homophobic six, so it's like more than half. I am evasive. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see the full recording of the gay guys watching Chuck and Larry, or if you just want to support the channel, please check out my Patreon, link in the description below. I also added a YouTube membership option. If you join, you'll be supporting the channel and you'll get access to these custom emojis like this beautiful one of Adam Sandler's face. And as always, please let me know in the comments what other movies you want me to force gay people to watch next. And right, now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go polish off this rainbow candy and watch Happy Together by Wong Kar Wai.
Bye, guys. Special thank you to my Adam Sandler Money patrons, Alexis Anciano, Andrea Morton, Andrew Coro, Andrew C., Aurora Borealis, Bibi LaBoss, Bruno, Caleb Fortner, Dylan Zayner, Fuzzy Numbers, Jake Elwood Strawberry, Lucas Probably, and Richard Brown. 